Full Service Radio is proudly supported and hosted by Simplecast, the easiest way for a podcast creator to publish and distribute audio on the internet. For more information, visit Simplecast.com. Full Service Radio. Peace, everyone, and welcome to the Edible Activist Podcast. I'm your host, Melissa L. Jones, broadcasting live from the lobby of The Line, D.C. This podcast is where dynamic people of color in the food and agriculture space share their personal food journeys, passions, and perspectives that stem from the land, all exemplifying the spirit of activism in their own edible way. Let's get started. What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Chris, from Afro Beats, back at it again, and you're listening to the Edible Activist Podcast, broadcasting live from The Line, D.C., on Full Service Radio. I'll be taking over for your host, Melissa L. Jones, for the month of July. In the meantime, I'll continue to bring dynamic and amazing guests here on the Edible Activist Podcast. In studio today, we are joined by D.C. native Kendra Hazel, the founder of Green Things Work, a plant-based holistic foods brand. As a FAMU undergraduate, she was able to turn a classroom assignment into a blossoming brand and business in the Washington, D.C. area. If you get a chance to catch Kendra at various pop-up events across the city or in collaboration with edible activists like Chef Lauren Vanderpool and the City Blossoms organization, you'll be treated to some amazing food and knowledge on how to live a truly holistic lifestyle. Welcome, Kendra. Thank you. So you're, you've been doing a lot since fam you, huh? Like you all over the place. I am all over the place. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so why don't you take us back to the beginning? You know, how did every, you know, how did Green Things Work start? Um, pretty much like you mentioned, I had a class assignment in my business class and I had to come up with a business plan and pretty much create a brand that I wanted to see flourish. And it started off just with an idea called Green Things Work. I really never wanted to stick to that name. Um, But at the same time, I was learning how to cook vegan and um, explore all these healthier options. And during the process, I was hosting food tastings at my school Yeah. um, to invite my friends over. And I would create these menus and have the food and get just feedback on it. Um, I did about three in college, and that really inspired me post graduation to continue to take my brand serious. Um, yeah, that's pretty dope. Like, it takes a lot of guts to do put yourself out there and do those types of food tastings. Like, were you nervous at all? Like, how did you deal with the the positive feedback, the negative feedback to you know build your brand? Um, I was definitely nervous because it was new, um, especially being in Florida. It was new to create this little healthier side to eating as a college student. Yeah. Um, so introducing my friends to it was, it was fun, but they, they were receptive, which was very great. That's and good. encouraged me to keep going, but it was a journey. I mean, I know if it was me, I wouldn't want to eat ramen for like the <laughs> fifth day in a row. So I would jump at the opportunity to be a taste tester. Right. And we, um, I would all, always have a lot of friends over it. And so I would cook and they really didn't have a choice but to try it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then they were like, oh, this is good. Can you make that again? <laughs> and then it just became like a cycle of trying new things and letting people be introduced to it. Yeah, for sure. So you didn't, you weren't always plant-based. You didn't grow up plant-based. What was it like, you know, living in DC, trying to find, you know, fresh produce, you know, living, you know, a health focused lifestyle? I did not grow up plant-based. I grew up eating everything under (laughs) under the the sun. sun. (laughs) Um, So it was a bit challenging coming back to the district trying to find healthy options. Uh, Being in Florida, there was always local fresh markets Mm -hmm. and very um, easy access to the produce. Here, I I struggled. Um, I would just shop at expensive grocery stores like Whole Foods Mm -hmm. and just really try to make it work, um, which then led to me maybe eating out a little bit more. But I found local markets and even um, 
Organic Market. I love Mom's Organic. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they have, like, you, the best you, produce. You can spend an arm and a leg there, <laughs> You for do, sure, but though. it's so worth it. Yeah. And I, I don't have an issue with it, but I'm trying to shop more local. So I feel like now I'm finally founding a, grant, a ground to have these healthy foods. Okay, so you have these amazing foods that you do on your Instagram, but it doesn't look, like, overly complicated like you you focus on nutritionally like dense foods foods that are good for you Mm -hmm. a lot of people say you know the plant-based life the vegan life it's very expensive do you have any tips for people trying to save some money on this lifestyle um i think that it will be expensive if you don't have a plan if you don't have a grocery store plan or list when you go in you're going to get caught up you're going to just buy whatever you think that you want to have um Primarily for me, I like to create lists of what I already have at home, what I want to make, and what I need. That way I don't overspend. Um, and also, it only gets expensive if you shop or all organic. True. Um, sure. Personally, I shop organic just because... No where food's coming from. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. another topic. However, um, I don't. it's really not expensive. And yeah. you can shop local at farmer's markets and get a bag of peppers for $2. That, that planning thing is key, man. I can't tell you how many times that I bought, like, a bag of limes and I have, like, 50 <laughs> limes yeah. already in the fridge. Like, that's the most annoying thing. Though. Right. And I feel like that's just a learning process. And also figuring out what you like to eat, what mm-hmm. you don't like to eat, how long you're going to want to eat it. It's just, like, a self journey that people have to embrace. Yeah, for sure. So another way, like, you can source some of those ingredients is by growing things as well, right? Correct. Yeah. So do you grow things at home? I know you have, you know, this career also with uh, City Blossoms, who's also been on the podcast. Do you want to go into that a little bit? (laughs) Um, So I actually have a garden, a community garden plot in my community, Langdon Park. I grew up in the area since forever. Um, So I was very grateful to get a plot through DPR. Uh, it took me about a year and a half to and get a And what does DPR stand for? Department of Parks and Recreation. Okay. All right. Just testing. Just testing. <laughs> um, so it was very, I applied to get a plot, and it took about a year and a half, mm-hmm. and I have a plot now. And the moment that I got the plot, pretty much I had an interview with City Blossoms, and they are a garden-based organization, so it was it just went hand-in-hand, and very grateful to have that opportunity to learn how to grow things more and uh, appreciate produce being grown and learning the beauty of growth, pretty much. And uh, in my garden plot, I currently grow collard greens, Swiss chard, kale, wow. tomatoes, peppers, um, and all of these are from Seatlands, from City Blossoms. Mm-hmm. I work with the Youth Entrepreneurship Program called Mighty Greens. Yeah, yeah, I've heard of them. <laughs> yeah, they're they're amazing. Um, so we grew everything from Seatland, transplanted them, and then I grew it. I grew mine in my plot. That's and dope. Everything's going beautiful. Yeah, yeah. So you guys do a lot of projects at City Blossoms. Is there anything that like really excites you right now? I know you guys had like a prom recently or not too long ago. (laughs) Yes, we had a plant prom, uh, our fiesta. That was really fun. It was my first one to experience. And I actually got to uh, be the vegan chef of the night. Oh, yeah. So that was very great. You're getting that bag. You're getting that double bag. Okay. (laughs) It was really great to have that crowd and that feedback. And that was that was different for me. That was one of my biggest events that I've done thus far. Um, and I was very grateful that my team allowed me to have that space to do two things that I love at one time. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. awesome. So what can we expect if we pop up to one of, you know, Green Things Works events? Like, what are we getting? What kind of delicious food are we in for? It depends. Um, depends on the event. So um, I have, I don't know if you're familiar with Dio Wine Bar. On E Street Northeast. I've heard of it, but I haven't gotten a chance to go. So they're the only uh, vegan and natural wine bar in the district. Wow. And I will be the vegan pop-up chef pretty much monthly. I did one last couple weeks ago. And so I'll be there next week. And like for that many, I'm going to have little finger, bar finger food, but vegan friendly, of course. So like Brussels sprouts and having um, the infamous barbecue jackfruit nachos. Oh. <laughs> I've people. heard of them. I've seen them. <laughs> I want them. You have to come. I'm definitely going to come through. Right. So, I mean, it pretty much depends on the on the event. Sometimes if I'm doing like a, a smaller crowd, I maybe do like a watermelon juice because mm-hmm. that's in season now. Um, also doing like a chickpea kale salad with greens that I grew from my garden. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. 
So you've been doing this entrepreneurship journey for a little while now. Um, mm-hmm. What are some of the challenges you've come? Because you've come a long way since, you know, that first taste test right. to now. Like you're really like I, I hear you, your name out in these streets a lot. So you, <laughs> you're doing something right. What are you know, what are some of the challenges and what are the, some things you can give advice on? Um, there's always going to be a challenge. <laughs> just you just have to keep pushing and just having faith in yourself, knowing that your dream will happen if you're dedicated to it um i'm doing this all by myself and i'm you know i'm very grateful to grow with my business personally and to know that i have the strength and the capacity to do all that i want to do and put my mind to it um so there's always going to be a challenge whether you don't have the resources the money the the help whatever it is but you find a way and yeah. you just have to be positive about it. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're going to take a pause here just to say this is uh, Chris from Afrobeats with the Edible Activist Podcast here on, um, yeah, full service radio. And we're with, you know, Kendra Hazel <laughs> with Green Things Works. And we're talking about entrepreneurship. We're talking about, you know, sourcing good, real food. And uh, I, want, I want to go a little bit deeper into the entrepreneurship thing. Okay. So, what are some of the things you've done to, reach out to people and like how do you even go about getting these pop-ups done um humbly enough a lot of people reach out to me yeah. um which is pretty cool to know that i'm seen yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so a lot of people reach out on social media or just via email um the vegan community is is coming up in the district and so I f- everybody wants vegan food at their event pretty much for sure and um i'm lucky enough to have people reach out to me yeah yeah including like many celebrities like uh <laughs> chef lauren vanderpool who we've also had on the podcast you you yes. were destined to be on this podcast you know everybody on the podcast, i know so. <laughs> so what was it like working with her That's she was amazing great experience. um working with her was was completely full circle for me i was working with her at KIPP DC Mm -hmm. Middle School. I went to KIPP, one of the first KIPPs in the district. And so going back there, it was a um, like a wellness conference for these young ladies in middle school. And one of the workshops was healthy eating and I got to be with Chef Lauren. Um, It was great to know that she's from here and that really inspired me. She's back and forth here in California, which is pretty much what I want to do eventually. Um, And she just had very high energy, very encouraging. um, And it just just inspired me to know that I can definitely do it if I continue to do what I'm doing right now and inspire these young, these youth, the youth was very important to me. Yeah. Speaking of the youth, like you're working a lot in these schools all the time, whether it be with these different pop-ups or with City Blossoms, you know, what are some of the struggles you're seeing with the youth when it comes to, you know, good eating and nutrition and what are some of the things you're doing to kind of tackle that? Um, I would say struggle would be knowing that they don't have it at home or that their family isn't open to allow them to be healthier. Um, when they're in that setting of having the fresh produce in front of them, they're very receptive and they love it. And it just makes me a little sad knowing that they won't do this at home. They're only doing this for this moment. Yeah. And, you know, they'll go back to their cycle of really not eating healthy yeah i've i've definitely noticed that i used to be a teacher myself yeah. and you know as much as they love the raspberries as much as they love like the apples the mm-hmm. you know the kale in the garden they're still going back home and not being able to educate themselves and get that you know fresh produce so. right it's, it's just like a limit put on them until they're pretty much in college yeah um, or just have the funds to feed themselves um because I mean, I'm pretty sure that was my reality as a youth, you know, knowing that it's it's better food out there for me to eat or just having a healthier lifestyle. But when you're with your parents and you have authority, it's really only so much that you can do. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I remember my mom just being like, boy, you better eat that. Yeah. (laughs) I'm like, "Uh, don't have an option, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) So because, you know, People don't have access, especially in low income areas. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think about the state of like veganism right now, especially for people of color? It's it used to be seen as very much a white movement. Right. Um, what are you seeing about the space now? Like maybe when you started, it was a different way and now it's a little bit different. Do you see any changes 
as time has gone on? I do. I, I see that now there are black farmers. Um, well, there's always been black farmers, mm-hmm. but black farmers who are now in the communities uh, with these farmers markets or maybe uh, feeding the homeless. I feel like black people are now stepping up and getting more aware that, you know, we need to do better as a community. I just saw Jaden yesterday. Did you see that? Oh, my God. That was amazing. Such inspiration. What did he do? He made, he, like, turned a food truck. He had a vegan food truck and just, like, served his food. For free. Yeah. And for his birthday. And that's just, that's pure bliss and, like, just amazing at what he's doing. And I really hope to one day be able to do things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think with the community, I think we're we're being receptive more now, um, especially because we've seen so many so many of us, you know, die because of health issues. You know, maybe that sparks a a question like, okay, can I do better? How can I do better? Um, And I think that leaders in the community are finally coming together to create those spaces for for us or for black people. Yeah, for sure. Like, I don't know the statistics, but I hear that, like, the drive through is killing more of us than, like, the drive-by, like, guns. Yeah. And, you know. It makes sense. I mean, and it's it's a thing to say, you know, McDonald's is cheaper than getting a kale salad at blah, blah, blah. And it makes sense, but in the end, you're just cheating yourself. For sure. It's not nutritional. Because you're going to pay for it either way, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately. Either the front end or the back end, you're either going to pay for it in health costs or you're going to pay for it at the market. So Right. But then you have community leaders like Blue Now. Are you familiar with Blue Now? I'm not. Blue Now is a herb shop on Georgia Avenue. Okay. Right across from Howard. And now every Saturday, pretty much, they offer holistic um, talks from doctors, natural doctors. They come wow. in and give you health consultations for free. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah. So... so what is how does this lifestyle allow you to transition into like more holistic practices because a lot of people i see in this space also are into like yoga and like meditation right. and just so how does this lifestyle help you make that transition and you know fulfill you more spiritually um i feel like it just all becomes an alignment uh when you start to read certain books mm-hmm. they talk about not just eating healthy but being healthy mentally physically emotionally so yes you do the meditation you do the the um the writing you do the isolation of self and just being grounded with nature there's certain things that kind of just go hand in hand that it's a process but you do to just create a, a holistic like life yeah healthy life um and i knew for me like it started with me before i even gave up eating meat completely i started off with just being natural remedies 100% um I used to you know take all these prescription drugs and I didn't mean to say well they are drugs but (laughs) pills but just knowing you know that it's it's only curing the now but Mm -hmm. not the later yeah and it's not holistically healing me so I saw that as an issue and I did my research got all these books and just started practicing that holistically and then the food part came and then the spiritual like you know just all became in alignment um one thing at a time yeah so what are some examples of uh, as much as you're comfortable sharing what are Mm -hmm. some examples of like maybe health issues you have and how you use you know food as medicine or plants okay um prior to me converting over to a plant-based diet i had like really bad acne and i just really didn't understand why but I, you know, searched within, did my research, and I figured out that you have to drink your water. You have to eat your water, too. Yeah. Um, and then using natural face remedies. So, like, I do an asset clay mask and um, manuka honey to help with my skin. And I still, I still do it. But just knowing that what you eat is also projected onto your body. For sure. Yeah, you yeah. guys can't see it, but her skin popping right now. Like, it's literally <laughs> glowing. So. Thank you. Yeah. That's dope. That's dope. I think uh, we're going to go ahead and take a break here, um, but we'll be back. We'll be back. We'll be back. You're listening to Perfect Day, produced by Artists Authentic. For more of Authentic's work, visit allornothingstudios.com.
All right, y'all. So welcome back. This is Chris from Afrobeats with the Edible Activist podcast live from the line DC on full service radio. We're joined by Kendra Hazel. Hello. Thanks for coming back and, uh, you know, being with us today. We're uh, talking about her food business, uh, Green Things Work. And uh, we were talking about entrepreneurship. We're talking about, you know, bringing good food into our community. And so I wanted to get into some things, little things I did, a little research little on things. you to like help more Uh-oh. people, give them more tips <laughs> because this, this journey is high and they need help, you know? Okay. Um, so I heard that you have a journal. Right. Like you do a journal of like everything you eat, like a diary, but for food. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Like talk a little about that. What is, what is that? Um, I pretty much did the food journal when I was first going plant-based mm-hmm. to pretty much see what I was getting at the grocery store weekly and also how my body reacted to it, um, whether I liked it or whether it, it was rejecting it, giving me energy, low energy. Um, so pretty much, yeah, just journaling how much water I would drink or what type of tea I would drink, what I ate for breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack. Um, and I feel like that really helped me figure out what I like. Yeah. And... Um, what do you like? What are some of those favorites? I like everything. You like everything? <laughs> um, so I really love tea. I love, I love to make herbal tea. Mm-hmm. Like this morning, I had Moringa um, for some energy and go-to cola. Okay. And then elderberry is really good. Okay. For like, oh, yeah. Elderberry you know, slaps. Yeah. Everything. <laughs> yeah. Um, and what else is my favorite? I love ginger. I can do ginger in pretty much everything. It opens me up. Um, and I like spicy, so that yeah. gives me like that kick that I want. Mm-hmm. Uh, kale, really love me some kale, which was I grew a lot of kale for that reason because I can throw kale on everything. And raw. it's really easy to grow around here. It's not too bad. Yeah, right? yeah. It's, it's going well. Um, what else do I love? I love onions. Yeah, red onions, white onions, right yellow onions. Of course. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, in any con- I like love onions, sautéed raw. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, so. What was your, you, you went to FAMU. Right. What was your, your background before you got into uh, this business? Um, so I was studying health science. Health science. Right, in, in undergrad. So mm. I was already, I was, I've always been into science and the anatomy of the body. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think just me learning about the other side of health mm-hmm. and the natural side just came full circle. Um, so science mixed with holistic practice, yeah, basically. Yeah, okay. right. Um, yeah, so pretty much that's what I was doing at FAMU. And I fell in love with agriculture. I was always a nature person, but being in Florida, being outside all the time, yeah. and just it was more calm mm. than being here and embracing the, the atmosphere of being outside all the time. That's when I really fell in love with agriculture. The climate of, like down there really makes it easy to grow like different fruits and right. things like that, right? And I so regret not growing anything. I had a beautiful, we had a beautiful house. Um, with a lot of land but mm-hmm. i just didn't want to get to it i don't know i just didn't want to get to attaching it and i knew that i was coming back yeah, yeah, yeah. home but i did not take advantage of that yeah unfortunately i mean and they have like all those hurricanes too and that's another thing yeah. <laughs> so you gotta watch crazy. out for that yeah. yeah so what what things do we need to know about the body I'm, I'm just curious more on that science aspect of what you were studying what things we need to know about the body that will help us like live better like how does food affect our body and um, having clean blood mm-hmm. is very important and having high, that means that you're going to have high iron if you have clean blood and to purify your blood. You can, of course, drink all the water, but also taking herbs and even wearing things like copper to give you that extra iron. Um, but having healthy blood means having healthy skin and just, mm-hmm. just feeling good. Yeah. I always see you with like dope like pieces and like jewelry <laughs> and stuff like Thank that. <laughs> um, how does your like African heritage like how do you pay homage to that like what can you talk about that i feel like it just naturally comes to me Mm -hmm. uh when i'm at an event i might see this amazing crystal with a copper ring and i'm like "Ah, i need it um or just gravitating towards a certain color certain hues Mm -hmm. uh to pay homage to that but i feel like it just comes natural to me yeah i'm still like learning about crystals what do you know are you up on that that knowledge i mean yeah but i'm no expert so i don't know if i really what, what wanna... do you know about it because i'm still trying to learn i'm like this uh, looks cool i'm gonna grab it yeah so i mean all of them you know serves a different purpose if you allow it to you have to charge it 
um, whether you charge it in the sun with clean water um, on your windowsill like you pretty much find your practice with it and it heals you how you need to be healed and different crystals mean different different have, things yeah different things that's dope that's dope so what's like the future for you know green things work everything yeah. um <laughs> the future i would really love to have a plant-based cafe in the district of columbia mm-hmm. um seeing as though this is my home and i really want to take it into my community mm-hmm. for sure and uh, definitely am going to continue to work with youth yeah. Because they are the future and they are very aware of what's going on. And I wish that I was this conscious as the, my younger self. Yeah. So I definitely want to continue to work with the youth and do garden work. And pretty much everything that I'm doing now, I just wanted to continue to grow mm-hmm. and expand. Expand. Yeah. Are you always you know, looking for new recipes and things? Are you expanding your palate? Like, how are you doing things like that yes um always expanded my palette um the kitchen is my creative outlet so whether it's pairing things because of color or a season or a flavor i'm very interested in trying new things and having people exposed to it and i'm also having a vegan event you in are. august okay you should come okay i'll definitely come what what's the date what's the info um, I think the date is August 11th, okay. so finalizing it, but it will be a lunch in the garden. Lunch in the garden. A little garden party. I'm definitely down for that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that will have people be exposed to different things, healthier options, and it will be a lot of takeaways that they can have with them to go home and refer back to. Cool. Um, what, what else do people need to know about you know the plant-based lifestyle if they're just like getting into it like it's it's really hard for people to start like it's for some people it's so far out of their their zone right what are some things that helped you because you you didn't go cold turkey right no i this is like a a five-year journey giving up one thing at a time when i felt like it was that time um i actually went plant-based way sooner than i wanted to yeah yeah i didn't it was like three years before i wanted to but what makes you do that why I, I was, I mean, honestly, I was getting disgusted by, yeah. by, by what I was eating and also just learning about it. I'm like, just like this isn't right. I don't feel right. Mm-hmm. It doesn't look right. doesn't smell right. I don't want it. Right. And like my body was just rejecting it a lot. Yeah. Um, so I knew that it was my time to stop eating it or stop intaking it into my body. Um, but I would just tell people that less is more. Um you don't have to overload your smoothies with all these flax seeds or, you know, whatever it is. Like, less is more. You figure out what your body can take. You feel like what you like. And you don't have to compare your journey to someone else's journey. Um, everybody's body is different. For sure. Yeah. And yeah. just stay positive and have fun with it. I was lucky enough to have two of my best friends transition over with me. Mm-hmm. We all live together. So it really was, like, a very great journey to have support and to know that we can all do it so maybe have some have some inspiration yeah, yeah. you can follow me Just at great things work yeah, yeah. Where, can, where can everyone <laughs> follow you what's all your platforms yeah so i am at green things work on instagram um having a website soon um and you can email me at green things work or you can see me at one of my pop-ups or anything of that nature yeah yeah i love it i'm definitely gonna pop up I'm definitely going to do that. Yeah, long yeah. overdue. I'm glad that we got to connect yeah, again. Yeah, for sure. Are you ready for this um, rapid fire question? Let's do it. All right. So, first question. What is your favorite leafy green? Uh, aru- uh, I was going to say arugula, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm going to say curly kale. Curly kale. Curly kale. Okay. All right. Sweet, sour, spicy, or salty? You can only pick spicy. one. Spicy. Spicy. Why spicy? Spicy. Spicy is amazing. I mean, sweet, sweet. And I get, I'm not, I don't really have that much of a sweet too. Salty. I said you can only pick one. Okay, okay, okay. Spicy. (laughs) All right. Spicy. Spicy. (laughs) Spicy. (laughs) All right. Uh, What is your favorite fruit? Favorite fruit? My favorite fruit right now Mm -hmm. is a mango. Mango. Yeah, but that changes. Depends depends on the season and everything. Okay. 
mangoes. Mango is is on a record, you know, run right now. I think yeah. we got like three in a row, three or four in a row. Okay. <laughs> um, what is cooking in your pot these days, literally? What is cooking in my pot these days? I've been cooking a lot of chickpeas. Yeah. Yeah. Me too, actually. They're just very filling, satisfying. Uh, chickpeas are like my love. Yeah, yeah. My favorite bomb. bean. I love it. Yeah. Uh, what is one way someone can channel their inner edible activist? Hmm. One way is to observe and re- be receptive. I'm to be receptive. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Well, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Yeah, this is uh, Chris from Afrobeats, the Edible Activist Podcast. We're with uh, Kendra Hazel with green things work green things work <laughs> and uh thanks for joining us y'all and we'll, we'll talk to y'all next week yes peace peace thank you everyone for tuning in we are here live on full service radio every wednesday at 11 a.m where you can catch today's episode on fullserviceradio.org as well as itunes and spotify be sure to follow me at food talks in color on instagram facebook and twitter Are you an edible activist? Sure you are. Come join me on the show. I would love to feature you. Just shoot me a DM on the gram. Peace and blessings all. And remember, there is no culture without agriculture. Thanks for listening to this program on Full Service Radio. Broadcasting and recording from the Line Hotel in Adams Morgan, Washington, D.C. Full Service Radio programming can be accessed live and archived on fullserviceradio.org. Our talk programming is available on most podcast apps like iTunes and Stitcher, and our DJ sets are available on mixcloud.com slash fullserviceradio. Full Service Radio features over 30 weekly shows and over 50 local hosts covering every topic imaginable. If you want to be a guest or get involved, email us at info at fullserviceradio.org. Follow us on Twitter at Full Service RDO, on Instagram and Facebook at Full Service Radio. Thanks for listening.